Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I have glasses. Wow, I know. Like, what do you guys think? I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I don't have glasses. These are my mom's, okay? But they're kind of cute, not gonna lie. But I'm like, hmm. I don't need glasses, guys. Your girl has 20-20 vision, okay? But these are my mom's. She left them here. So I thought, I was like, let me try these on. I'm gonna try and convince YouTube that uh, I have gotten glasses and these are the ones I picked. <laughs> So pretty much I have some plants that are doing much better, they're doing really well, they're finally growing and just kind of getting back to their normal selves I guess after a very hard, harsh, difficult winter, very stressful winter for them. I do have some positive updates to share with you guys and then I do still have a few plants that are really struggling that I need to do something about. So I think that I need to track them before I lose all of their foliage and I no longer have that option. I have some leaves like this here, just old leaves that need removed. And I have some plants that need staked up that are just kind of flopping over, just like some rando stuff. So that's what we are doing. I am really excited to show y'all some of the plants that are kind of bouncing back and, and starting to grow now. It's just, it's exciting because I've just, was so worried about so many of my plants. The fact that some of them are bouncing back and just, you know, hopefully ready for spring. They realize spring is on its way and they recognize the effort I've been putting in. It's just really rewarding. It's like a thank you for my plants. So I know that's cheesy as hell, but let's get into some of the plant chores that we have to do today. The light on, I don't really know if it's gonna help, but you guys. First of all, this guy's just still trying his best to come back, okay? Um, he got burn up this past summer, but he's doing good. Like, these are new growths right here. This is new growth, obviously. And then he does have some pups over here. This is Big Al. He's not that big anymore, I'm aware, but he's had some struggles in his life. But he's tough, he's strong. Proud of you, buddy. I have this little begonia here. It came back beautifully. It actually had died back as well. I have my big Rapidifora tetrasperma here. But anyhow, we're over here because of this guy. I think I should probably turn out these purple lights. They're not doing anyone any favors. This is my philodendron Florida, and I have no idea what has happened. Whenever I got this plant, the leaves were very juvenile, which they're still juvenile, but they were even less. They didn't have these fenestrations. I don't know what you call them. They were just baby leaves. This plant was doing it very, very well. It's growing really well, and then out of nowhere, it just started to decline, and here we are. I didn't jump on it as quickly as I should have, and you can see, like, it just continues to lose leaves. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I think the only thing that I can do for this is to chop it up here at the growth point and try and propagate it. I'm going to lose all of these leaves. Like, I don't doubt that at all. This one may stay. This is the newest. Hasn't even hardened off yet. So I'm going to cut it there with that leaf and the growth point, and I'm going to try and propagate it. Just making a mess everywhere, okay? So anyway, this is one thing we have to do. I mean, this is just like my struggling plant right here. This is an Alocasia fry dot. They have a tendency to go dormant, so I don't know if it's going to come back or not. I think it just got fed up with all the spider mite attacks. My monster Peru is doing very poorly. Might try to cut him up as well. I know that these leaves were kind of showing in the background of a couple of my videos, but I never pointed it out, and I don't understand why, because they're so beautiful. But I have two new leaves on this giant Monstera Deliciosa, and here's one of them. Like, look at all of the ribs look at all the fenestrations i love the little holes that new leaf is just so good and then we, there's another one almost identical right here oh you can't see her great incredible i got my scissors we're gonna be chopping some guys i have some alcohol spray here so i can disinfect my scissors in between first things first we're gonna go ahead and just pull this florida out i'm assuming his roots are just like dead that's my initial thoughts here. The soil is very dry. Does it even have any freaking roots? What the heck? Y'all, it doesn't even have any roots. Okay. I don't know if they just like dissipated or what, but like that's mostly just soil. There's hardly any roots and the roots that it does have are completely dried out and like dead. 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 So I guess it just was an underwatering. I let it go too long without water. And this is what happens. So it's on its way out. That is a fact. So really the only thing I know to do is like I said, we're gonna snip it right here. Yeah, even part of that stem is dead. It looks like this might have a chance, even though we're probably gonna lose these leaves. 
There is a growth point, so we're gonna put this straight into moss and attempt to reroute him because this poor guy, like, I'm so sorry I let this happen to you, okay? I kind of don't want to put it in a tiny planter because they dry out so fast and I can't keep up with it. And my moss is dry, but it's okay. Normally I'll wet the moss before I use it, but in this case, um, I'm gonna use it and then I will, I'll give it a good water, good thorough water. Okay, that's literally it. We'll water in in a bit, but that's pretty much, that's that. This plant I have seriously always struggled with. Um, and it's an underwatering issue as well because I don't know it's I've always had it in terracotta and it's always thirsty always I water it it bounces back and like a day later it's just it's wilted and yellowing and thirsty again so I think this plant really should have went in a plastic or ceramic planter from the get-go from the jump I didn't used to be such an underwater okay I used to be kind of like a helicopter mom when it came to my plants these roots look oddly similar. They look very familiar. They are completely dried out. And that that is that's that. Yeah, they're just completely dried out, y'all. Underwatering, I'm telling you. This whole thing of roots here looks pretty well dead. This might still have some life in it. Alright, what are we gonna do here? I'm sorry, buddy. I really just let so many of my plants down this year. Well, last year, I guess. Okay, we're just going to chop this up because what else can I do? Oh, I said I was going <laughs> to. I said I was going to say bye. -bye. My bad. Maybe I'll leave these roots on this and I'll go ahead and put this in moss and just kind of see what happens. Okay, I grabbed. Excuse this, Mike. It's just causing me issues. I grabbed some pots here, so. This guy, you're just gonna go in here in some moss. I'm gonna look at some good, positive updates that make me happy after this. Don't worry, it's not all gonna be doom and gloom, I promise. Okay, there it is. I probably actually could add this one into the pot with this one. That's probably what I should do, right? There's actually a growth point right there. A new little leaf coming in. <laughs> oh, it looks pitiful. To, on to the last one that we're gonna be trying to save today. My Aphenis, Hoya Aphenis. So we're gonna chop her right here. Boom, like so. Take her off her pole. That's actually super duper cute, isn't it? Oh, you are precious. I would be really upset if I lost this plant, not gonna lie. needs a pull this little dinky thing is not holding him up so I guess he's gonna get these all right let me put the poles in here really quick and we're gonna set our geo plant brand new babe right here on this shelf because it just makes more sense this little dinky guy what purpose are you even serving Good. This is my philodendron Lene. Good morning. It is Thursday. I got something in the mail a couple of days ago from Amazon that I'm going to share with you guys. I've never used it before, but I'm kind of excited to try it. So I am going to share that with you guys and then we're going to go around and utilize it on some of my plants, I think. So let me grab it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So look over my unmanicured nails. But this is what I got. It's called Pot Shots, and here's what they look like. They look pretty crazy. Look like popcorn kernels. The Osmocote. 
uh, plant food. I have used Marfil Phytoplankton Fertilizer. This is a Canadian brand. I get this on Amazon. But I have used this for two years now, at least, maybe three at this point. Um, however, one of you guys, one of my subscribers, actually commented that they use the same brand and they recently got some Osmocote slow release beads for their plants as well and that their plants were doing a lot better. I'm not super familiar with Osmocote, so maybe I will get familiar with it and I can make a video that's a little bit more informed, but you can get the regular fertilizer beads, but what the pot shots are is basically the beads are already portioned out and I guess there's instructions in here. So like pretty much, I think if you have like a 10 inch pot, here we go, it tells you how many pot shots you will need like per what size pot. So for like a 10 inch pot, you would put two pot shots in the pot and it supposedly feeds your plants for up to six months. And then for smaller pots, you would just use one. Um, my only thing is I have a lot of plants and obviously there's not that many pot shots. And this was kind of expensive. But this is a, a way to ensure that you don't over fertilize your plants. So that's kind of why I went with the pot shots instead of just the containers of the little slow release Osmocote beads. But after this, after I use these, I'll probably just get the beads because it's much cheaper. So yeah, I'm gonna go around and stick some of these in the soil. I guess that's all you do. You just push them down on the soil and you're done, good to go. So that's what we're gonna do really quick. Let's remove this yellow leaf. This Jose Bueno has some funky stuff going on right here on this leaf, so we are definitely removing this leaf. Okay, now we're moving the pink princess into the tent. Um, where's she gonna go? Right here. For now, maybe? What are you doing? Okay, let's. This should already have water in it. Yes. Heat. Three. All right. Say hi. Hi. Okay. Hi, Kara. Oh, that's not Sarah. <laughs> she thinks it's Sarah. Hi. So now we are going to go around and do some growth updates. Yay! Me, me too, me too, me too! I'm going to go around the grow tent and just all around my collection, not just the grow tent, and look at some new leaves and just see how everybody's doing, coming along. Let's go check them out. Let's go check out some new leaves. So first up, we have Philip, my fiddle leaf fig. This guy is really special to me. I don't name all of my plants, but he does have a name. And you can see here that he's finally pushing out a new leaf after being st stagnant for, I don't know, at least three, maybe four months. If you move these guys around, they can be a bit finicky and refuse to grow, drop leaves. So that's kind of what happened with him. Very, very proud of this guy and the fact that he is putting out a new leaf. It's been a few days later, by the way, and here's that new leaf. It's not finished growing yet, but yeah, I'm so proud of you, Philip. This is a Begonia Lucerna, and I grew this from a little cutting that was sent to me. So this Begonia actually lost every single one of its leaves this past fall, and I just kind of left it be, continued watering, fertilizing. Lo and behold, it has filled back out. All of these leaves it's just put off over the last month or two, 
and now it's back to a full plant again which I'm very happy about. Here we have a cutting off of my begonia Alice Fay. This was actually knocked off of the mother plant and so I have it in water here rooting. It's putting out a new leaf. She is very well rooted at this point so I need to get her potted up pretty soon but um, I'm happy that it's taken root and growing and this is the mama plant that it was snapped off of also producing new leaves. Now one thing I did notice about the that portion being knocked off, it's causing the bottom, the base of the plant, to become really, really full and lush and bushy and I'm living for it. All right, we're gonna need a second to just kind of admire this begonia red Fred and this gorgeous new leaf. Oh my lanta, look at this. I do need to up pot this one as well. Come spring, these begonias are going up a pot. However, it's doing really, really well since I threw it in the grow tent. I mean, look at all these new leaves. You can tell they're all different colors. I mean, it's just the color combos between the oldest leaves, the newest leaves, and the ones that are kind of in between is really phenomenal. Oh, I just, I can't get enough of that new bright red leaf. So when I peeped in to check how this begonia was doing after throwing it in here, there's another new leaf. I was just like stoked. So really enjoying this plant right now, really enjoying watching Mr. Fred grow and do his thing magnificent begonia y'all need one i got this from steve's leaves and it did not disappoint y'all i have been on quite the journey with my philodendron bilitai it's been full of ups and downs so again he's been stagnant for about four months he hasn't put off a new leaf and uh, i just recently noticed he's finally pushing this leaf out of the sheath so this is really exciting i mean he doesn't give me new leaves very often but when he does it is uh, a really exciting it's an exciting time so i'll be anxious to see what this new leaf looks like we have this beautiful new leaf here. It has a couple little boo-boos, but for the most part, it looks really, really good. It's also blooming. Now, this is my Anthurium Magnificum. Um, I, I'm doing this on different days, so like some clips I have nails, some clips I don't. But uh, basically, he's constantly pushing out a new bloom. Probably every third new leaf, uh, typically a new bloom is coming in as well. And I usually remove them before this point. I just haven't yet. Uh, so he could focus on his foliage because that's what we're here for uh, but I probably will move remove that later on today moving right along to my gorgeous Anthurium palitiflora this was the new leaf that he gave me a while back and um, it's just breathtaking but look at this little dinky cutie pie here and it is jacked up like look at it so I just really have to stay on top of the watering when these new leaves are coming in or they will jack themselves up and right here, there's actually another new leaf. All the way back here, we have my Squammy, who has produced a second growth point now. So this is the new leaf on that. Yes, we've been battling spider mite, but it looks better than the last one. This was the last one, okay. And then over here is the second growth point, and we are unfurling a new leaf right here. Back there, we have another new leaf coming in on the little Clarinervium. Very cute. Okay, so here's my big boy by Pinifolium. This is my regular green guy. Check out this new leaf right here coming in. Oh, that humidity is low. Well, it's going to be a good size leaf. Like, are you kidding me? Love to see it. Yeah, I'm my dark lord. His new leaf right here. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Guys, this is really exciting. This is the new varicosum that I recently unboxed. And look, that new growth point that she had is unfurling. Now that looks like varicosum. There's no denying that that looks like varicosum. Absolutely beautiful plant. Love her. And then also, this is the Tenu type. I know it's hard to see, but right there, I had to chop it back after I got it due to root rot. Um, it was rotted when I received it. And look right there, the brand new growth point coming in. So that's fun. We have a new Adabo Poency leaf coming in right there. Oh, we have a little gro baby growth point on the Violinorium as well. That's new. This new leaf on my Florida Ghost. So cute. 
Well, there's actually multiple little new leaves on multiple different plantlets in the pot. But this one's all white. There's a new leaf on my variegated giganteum. This guy has continuously had spider mites, so hopefully that new leaf isn't too jacked up. This Vichy back here has a new growth point. Yay! Oh, but also, this is Sword Sordoroy AFF, a finis or whatever it is, and look at that new leaf right there. Ooh, I love this plant because it's so silver and pillowy. That new leaf came in beautifully. Like, that is perfect. Isn't it gorgeous? This new leaf on my Luxurians X Radicans is very cute. Look at you. It's kind of like crinkled up, but it's adorable. There's the Compo, Philodendron Compo, that we added a pole to not too long ago. Well, she's completely outgrown the pole, as you can see. Constantly putting off new leaves, and I do want them to get more mature, so I need to get a plank or something to put in here so she can mature her leaves because this just isn't going to work for long. Look at my Albo Syngonium, y'all. Isn't she perfect? Like, are you kidding me? And her little pink planter. Look at this new leaf. It's all white. There's like a tinge of green right here in this lobe. But she's looking phenomenal. Like, ooh, girl, you pretty. My 69686, which was on the struggle bus due to spider mites, has officially unfurled his new leaf right there. This is the cutest plant, y'all. These leaves are just cute. I don't know how else to describe them. But I'm proud of him for pushing out a new leaf. I swear my plants just know. They know that spring is on its way. And they are rejoicing. Okay? They are. There's this new leaf on my little orchid. My coffee orchid. Look at that purple. Whew. And there's also a new flower spike right there that's getting some little buds on it. Very cool. This is uh, Anthurium debilis. And I noticed the green coming in, but I don't know if it's going to amount to anything. This really needs to be in an enclosed space pretty badly. Oh, and up there is my Bipenifolium aurea. Also has been struggling with the mites, same as my silver sword. Oh, this is fun. My Alocasia dragon skull. This plant did take a couple of months to acclimate and start to grow. She did lose her older leaves, all except for this one. And this is her the first new leaf that this plant has given me since I got her. This was an import. And just look at that, that dark purple red on the back like that's so gorgeous I'm just really happy to see a new leaf finally because it means the acclimation process is over and the plant is happy and there's another growth point there so cute love you this is my Mexicanum okay this here was his newest leaf this little cutie it's kind of dusty we are pushing out a new one again right there I'm just so proud of all these plants that are doing well now after kind of being stagnant for basically the entire winter. It's my painted lady, which is kind of growing all crazy, but we love it. So here was her newest leaf. And we have another right there coming in. Beautiful plant. I really like the crazy growth that she has going on right now. This pink Congo is still just popping off with those little dainty pink leaves. They're small though. The leaves are really small, like all the pink ones anyway. The Splendid that still needs cut with this insanely old leaf. But believe it or not, Mama Splendid has put off new growth points all the way down this stem finally. So we have a new growth point here. This is the new leaf and there's another one coming in there. We have a new growth point here. Here, that's pushing out a leaf. Here. Like, these growth points are, are actually activated, you know? 
when they're starting to push out growth. So it's really exciting. As well as here, if you can see that one. And then all the way down at the bottom, we also have a growth point um, with a new leaf about to push up. Actually two, holy crap. Okay, so there's one right here coming off the base of the stem. And there's another one, you guys, right there coming out of the soil from the base of the plant. So it looks like I'm not going to have to cut her up anymore. She's just kind of decided to fill herself out. I have multiple other small plants of this from where, from the cuttings that I took off the top. Um, but you can't have too many splendids. Honestly, they're just amazing plants, okay? I will take all of the splendids. Not even going to okay, lie. Okay, my radicans was putting off a new leaf like a month ago, but the bad spider mites took out that new leaf before it could even unfurl. So I'm pleased to say that we have another growth point emerging right there. So fingers crossed that it makes it. My grow tent's a mess right now, you guys. Here's my Tribii, Skindapsis Tribii Moonlight. Man, this plant has really filled out. It was a good size, don't get me wrong, whenever I picked it up. But it's just, it's doing so well. Yes, it has some damaged leaves from the mites, but... It's still just pushing out new leaves all over the pot. Like, look how cute. Everywhere. New leaf, new leaf, new leaf. And it's so full. Like, I feel like she's going to be trailing soon. I love, love, love this plant. It's easy to see why. This plant's been doing really well. Here, look at this new leaf, y'all. How beautiful is that? This is my philodendron flamanii that I've had to start over as well. Look at those petioles there. That's incredible. I love the rippling. But yeah, so she had this leaf. It was her first new leaf when she came back from a wet stick. And this is her newest new leaf. And it's huge and so, so pillowy and dreamy. Like, oof, I love it. This plant is seriously so gorgeous. That silver is just really impressive. My purdy philodendron giganteum here is just continuously putting off new leaves. Oh my gosh. Y'all, I literally kiss my plants sometimes, okay? And, and speak positive aff affirmations into their ear. Literally, my lipstick. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> that was a new leaf. This is a new leaf. And then there's another growth point here and here. It's doing really well. I love how large the leaves are getting also. Like, I just really like this plant, along with the, the variegated one in my grow tent. I repotted this peperomia about two weeks ago now, and already she has these new growth points poking up everywhere. She is so cute and I love that she just trails. My Hoya Multiflora that's been through it, okay, is she has one bloom still hanging on and you can see some sap or a hair or something on it. She's dropped the rest of them. This plant wasn't growing either for like the last year, honestly. And now, guess what? Look at that, how cute. So these top leaves here are new. And then obviously these two little bunny ears here are new. So I'm really proud of her. I need to up pot her also. I'm thinking probably little guy, which is insanely thirsty, this mayo eye. And it looks like it has bugs again, but it is unfurling a new leaf. So I need to pull it out and check on it. See what's going on there. My, all my ficus are growing currently. So we have that new little leaf and then right here, so cute my altissimas this one is working on a new leaf as well so yeah something else exciting you guys this is a splendid this was a cutting off of the mother plant and has one leaf okay there's a new growth point that has branched off of this main stem here so yay he's finally going to become his own little plant my Alba Monstera up here, that's his newest leaf, and I'm not sure why it doesn't have any fenestrations, but oh well, it's fine. It's totally fine. Whatever you want to do, buddy. 